Hi everyone and welcome to Presque Isle Provincial Park. My name is Sydney and I'm a naturalist with the Friends of Presque Isle. Today I'm going to take you on a virtual field trip of our Marsh Boardwalk Trail. Let's go see what we can discover. Welcome to the marsh. Here at Presque Isle, we have one of the largest marshes on Lake Ontario, and it's growing even larger every year. Today, I'm going to take you on a tour of this special habitat, and we're going to explore some of the unique plants and animals that call the marsh home. The marsh is a habitat, which means that it's home to lots of plants and animals, but a habitat also has lots of non-living features. As we look all around us, try to think of a few things that make this habitat different from other habitats you may have seen before, like a forest. What makes the marsh special? Well, there are three main features of a marsh. Together, these elements make it a very unique habitat. Marshes are very wet, sunny, and windy, a lot more than other habitats. The first thing we often notice about a marsh is that it is very wet. Marshes are defined as areas that are covered in water most of the year and sometimes all year round. The second thing we often notice about a marsh is the lack of large trees. A lack of trees means that there is very little shade, so marshes are very sunny. Finally, since they are open spaces, the wind can be very strong here at times, so marshes are windy. The features of a habitat determine which plants and animals like to live there. If you live in a marsh, you have to like lots of water, sun, and wind. Today, we're going to talk about some of the plants and animals that live here, and how they have adapted to live in a wet, sunny, and windy habitat. Each of the plants and animals we're going to talk about today are also a part of this thing called the marsh community. They all have roles to play in keeping the marsh healthy, and in a way, they're all connected. We will explore some of these connections today. Let's get started. The first plant I want to show you is this plant, and it might just be the most important plant in the marsh, because it helps all of the animals that live here. These plants are called cattails, named for their fuzzy brown head that looks kind of like a cat's tail. This part of the plant is actually part of the flower of a cattail. Now, cattails love to live in the marsh, and while they can sometimes be found in other habitats, the marsh is where they really thrive. Cattails live in the water. They actually need a wet environment in order to grow. Instead of growing in the soil like some plants do, cattails grow out of the water, so they must live somewhere that is wet. Another feature of the marsh is that it is windy, and windy is good for cattails. The top of the plant that we talked about earlier contains seeds from the cattail. The cattails rely on the wind to sweep the seeds up and carry them far and wide so that there can be more cattails in the future. So cattails need to live in a habitat that is wet and windy, which means that the marsh is a perfect place to live. Well, now we know why cattails live in the marsh, but I mentioned earlier that cattails are connected to all of the animals that live here. Can you think of any ways that cattails might help animals? Cattails provide shelter and protection for many of the animals that live here. From the tiny butterfly to the giant beaver, they all use the cattails. They also provide a place for birds to build their nests, and they provide a source of food for some animals. But the way that they help all of the animals in the marsh is not quite so obvious. It's actually happening right now below the boardwalk. Cattails act as a filter, similar to the ones you might find in a fish tank, to remove harmful chemicals and excess nutrients. This helps to clean the water and ensures that all of the animals here have clean water to drink and to live in. Even though we can't see it, all of these cattails are doing a very important job right now. Next, I want to introduce you to an animal that loves cattails. Let's go check it out. If we look closely at the water in the marsh, we can sometimes see a series of pathways along the water. This means that an animal has been traveling through the water here, and I think I know who it was. The first animal we're talking about today is one that many people are not familiar with, even though they're very common in a marsh environment. This animal is a muskrat. They do look very similar to a beaver, but they're a lot smaller, and they don't have that big, flat tail. Muskrats are actually more closely related to mice than they are to beavers. Who would have thought? Muskrats love to live in the marsh, and even though they can sometimes be found in other habitats like the lake, the marsh is their favorite place to be. Now, the reason that muskrats like the marsh so much is because of the plants that are here. Muskrats need cattails, and cattails need to live in a marsh. So, since they need to be here, the muskrats come here too. A muskrat's favorite food is cattails. They eat the young plants, but their favorite part is the roots. They'll eat other aquatic plants as well, but cattails are always at the top of their list. Muskrats also use cattails to build their lodges, where they live. So, muskrats can live in other habitats. Marshes have a lot of cattails, so they like to be here. Here, I want to talk about two different marsh specialists. If we take a look over here, we can see the first one. I'm talking about lily pads. Now, lily pads are actually just the leaves of the plant, and the rest of the plant is submerged underwater. There are a number of different species that have lily pads for leaves. These ones right here 
happen to be yellow pond lilies, but we also have white water lilies here at the marsh. As their name suggests, lily pads and water lilies need water. They want to live in a habitat that has an abundance of water. They also need lots of sun since most of the plant is underwater. They use their large leaves at the top of the water to harness the energy from the sun to make their own food. So they need to live in a wet and sunny habitat where the water isn't too deep. Lily pads are another really important plant in the marsh because they help a lot of creatures that live underwater. Lots of baby animals live in the waters of our marsh and they need protection. Baby frogs, baby insects, and baby fish can all be found in the water and they all use the lily pads. These large leaves provide shade to protect the babies from the sun and they also provide a really good hiding spot to hide from hungry birds above the water. Can you think of any other animals that use lily pads? I can, frogs. When we think of a frog, we often think of them sitting on a lily pad, right? Frogs are another animal that we often think of when we're thinking of marsh animals. I thought you should also know that not all frogs actually live in the marsh. Here at Presque Isle, we have frogs that live in the forest and even frogs that live in the fields. So let's focus on a marsh specialist, the American bullfrog. The bullfrog is the largest frog in all of Ontario, and they'll eat anything they can fit in their mouth, including other frogs. All frogs need water to lay their eggs and for their tadpoles to grow up in. But bullfrogs need a permanent water source for their babies because it can take up to two years for a bullfrog tadpole to become a bullfrog. So they need a habitat that has water all year round. That's why they really like the marsh. Bullfrogs play an important role in our habitat as both predators and prey. They hunt the insects that visit the flowers in the marsh and they also get eaten by the herons and the otters in the marsh. As well as being part of the food chain, Frogs also have another special role. They are called an indicator species. Frogs breathe through their skin, which means that they need to live in an environment that is healthy and not polluted. If the water that frogs live in is polluted, it clogs their skin and they can't breathe. If you have frogs in an area, then you know that the water is clean and healthy. So if we began to notice that there were fewer or no frogs in the marsh, we would know there was a problem with the water. This is one of my favorite spots along the marsh boardwalk trail. From this bridge, you can sometimes see swans, fish guarding their nests, and, if you're really lucky, maybe a turtle swim by. Turtles are another animal that love to live in the marsh. They need a wet and sunny habitat to live in. The water helps them get around quickly, and the sunshine keeps them nice and warm. Here at Presque Isle, we have five species of turtle that you can see in our marsh. The most common turtle that you might see here is the common snapping turtle. Snapping turtles are the largest turtles in Ontario, and they're a very important member of our marsh community. Do you know what a snapping turtle's favorite food might be? This is a tricky one, but their favorite food is actually dead things. Snapping turtles love to eat dead animals that they find in the marsh. While they will sometimes hunt things like fish, frogs, and sometimes baby birds, they prefer to eat dead things if they can find them. Now, this might sound kind of gross to us, but eating dead things helps all of the animals here in the marsh. Snapping turtles are a part of the cleanup crew, helping to clean the water by removing dead animals so that they don't pollute the water. These shrubs around me are what we call an indicator plant. When you see them, you know that water is around because they love to be wet. These plants are called red osier dogwood and you can recognize them by their unique red bark. This shrub grows all around the marsh on the edges of the water. Even though these guys love the water, they can't grow where the water is really deep and it has flowers in the spring and berries in the fall. Can you think of any ways that dogwood might help animals? Well, dogwood is an important plant for some of the birds that live here in the marsh. The sturdy branches make a great place to build a nest. The flowers that we see in the springtime provide food for insects, just like the lily pad flowers, which means that there's more food for our insect eating animals as well. When these flowers turn into berries, kind of like this, many birds like to stop in for a snack as they fly down south for the winter. While dogwood helps animals, it can also help people too. Indigenous peoples across North America have a variety of different uses for dogwood. Some use it for basket weaving and for making dream catchers because the stems are very flexible. Various parts of the plant can also be used for herbal medicine, and this bright red bark can be used as a dye for fabrics. So dogwood is an important plant in our marsh because it provides a safe place to build a nest, it provides food for a variety of different animals, and it can be used by people too. Do you think that red osier dogwood might be the most important plant in our marsh? I have one more place I want to show you guys. Let's go see it. We have one more plant that I would like to talk about today, and it's this large tree here behind me. This is a willow tree. Willows love to have wet roots and are often found along the edges of marshes, lakes, and rivers. Willow trees like to live in sunny, wet, and windy habitats, so the marsh is a perfect place for them. Like the cattails, they use the wind to help them spread their seeds, but their seeds can also float on the water, so they can spread that way too. 
Just like the dogwood tree, the willow provides a safe space for birds to build their nests, and it offers protection to other animals from the wind and bad weather. If there was a thunderstorm right now, the willow tree would be a very safe place for animals like birds, butterflies, and many others. The willow tree also provides food for plant-eating animals such as caterpillars, and in return, the caterpillars are eaten by the birds. So just like the dogwood tree, the willow tree helps the birds, and the birds help the tree. Birds eat the caterpillars so that they don't eat all of the leaves on the tree. This brings us to the end of our marsh boardwalk trail. Today, we learned a lot about different animals and how they can help the plants in the marsh, and vice versa. I hope you learned a lot and that you'll come back to the marsh in person very soon. Bye everyone!